So I've drawn my posts and stopped very close to the dots. Um, now I'm going to line up my ruler with the vanishing point here. And I'm going to make the bottom line of my billboard sign from here to here. After I've done that, I'm going to extend it as tall as I'd like it. And then I'm going to make the top and connect that also to the vanishing point. Remember, it's a good idea um, when you're going left to right, like I am, make your left line first that indicates how tall you'd like signs and other things to be. That way it's easier to connect it to the vanishing point and you have less to erase. You're just connecting two segments at the end. So I've got a sign on one of my buildings now, but um, if it's Sears, one of the good things about a sign, it's a chance for me to show you that letters really run from uh, large to small, from left to right in a perspective drawing. And I think that's pretty obvious to most people. Um, use a pencil and then go back with a pen later to go over it once you've kind of finalized your line, so to speak. What I do in a title like Sears, we know that it has five letters. And so we know that the middle letter is going to be centered somewhere around here. And then that kind of shows us that the other two spaces should be split equally into one, two, three, four. Now I can readjust the center because the center in this particular one should be a little wider, going to smaller. Now, if it turns out that you're not going from large to small, simply erase your guidelines and go back. Now letters are the same way. I, I, simply, I simply go over them lightly. Do all of my straight lines first, like the top to bottom in the E, uh, the top to bottom in the R, and you know that this S needs to relate to the first one and be much, much smaller. And so this one's going to be a bit bigger. This one's going to now relate the bottom of the E to the bottom of the sign, top of the E to the top of the sign. And your A is tricky. The center of the A should relate to the E next to it. And it's a very simple pyramid. The R having a curved shape should just be very subtle. And signs can always be adjusted. Um, my sear sign, if I wanted to go back and fix it up, could be much, much, much better. But it's just an easy way for you to see that letters run from large to small, left to right. Now, it would be the opposite if I were on this side of the street. It would be very difficult. I'd start with a very small, small S, large, large S at the end. Okay, um, moving over to this side of the street, we're going to basically draw some lamp posts. Now the sidewalk is a little bit thinner on this side of the street, and so we can easily add a building in here if we want to, but I think the best thing to do is add a lamp post. I'm going to use a series of dots, and if you had a ruler, you could, you could actually get very mathematical, and you could increase by increments. Um, you notice that the ruler, if I'm just looking at uh, millimeters, and most people don't just look at millimeters, but if I'm looking at millimeters on the ruler, one of the things I notice is that I could just actually add probably a quarter millimeter to each one um, in order to make the signs appear from, to get small at the beginning and large at the end. You get better at it with your eyes over time, so I think at first it's better to just guesstimate. I'd like about five signs, so I need five dots. I know the sign closest to me is going to be really close to the edge of the paper, and it's probably going to run right off. So I'm going to put my guideline where the bottom of the sign will be, somewhere around the front of the paper here, so I know that it's going to run off the paper. My next guideline, um, and if you're thinking this is the total space of the guideline from here to here, the next guideline is going to be where the first sign appears. And I'm going to just make a very, very small line to kind of show that a sign this far away from me, I'd barely be able to see anything. That's the total height of our farthest sign. That's almost important. In this case, we'll make street lamps instead of signs. I like them better. It's important to indicate the one that's the farthest away first. Well, you're probably guessing that's because you're going to line up your vanishing point with the top of it. You're exactly right. Once you line up your vanishing point, then you can go through with this incremental system. Now the incremental system that I'm talking about going from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. And as we said before, you need to go and check your spaces. This needs to be bigger than this, needs to be bigger than this, needs to be bigger than this, needs to be the smallest space. Okay, I've really taken a pause and done a couple important things that I'd like to point out. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't drawn the bottom of the lights yet. What I have done, after I made a guideline here, starting from my vanishing point and the top of that first object I was describing, 
to pan out a little bit, I went and I drew circles uh, ranging from small to large and in sequential order. So the second one being a little bigger, third one bigger, fourth one bigger, fifth one biggest, but if I were to finish it, it would continue right off the page. That's why you don't see it. The pole even for this one would probably continue off the page, so I don't even need to show much of it, just show that there's a series going on, that obviously someone built them in order like this. All right, now for the bottoms of them and for the tops of them, if you ever have parts that don't match, you just erase them, like the top of my pole here, it didn't match. I can go back and very quickly fix that, and then if I'm gonna lay this down with ink, everything will be outlined in ink and it'll look great. So to the bottom, what I usually do, um, I match the curved shape of the top because that's what a pole would look like if you were staring at it from the front. And then you can design your base in a number of ways. If you want that to be a square base, you use your same perspective rules. You just basically draw lines to indicate that the sidewalk has something that mounts the pole. I like these little circular bases, and so sometimes when I'm doing a circular base, I just do one line down and another curved line down and it's a series of curved lines but it basically looks like a lamp post that's mounted with screws to the base and all i had to do was curve line curve line on the bottom for the lamp post two curved lines on the sides for the base of the lamp post and one more curved one so that it looks in perspective as though it's wrapping around the pole i'm going to go ahead and fill in the base for all five and i'll be back so this is a very basic lesson on perspective um, you know, I do letters now, and signs, and windows, and a door, and maybe some lights. You know what a vanishing point is. You know what a horizon line is. Um, hopefully you understood. Uh, Two-point perspective, your major differences with these two vanishing points, you are allowed now to show that we could be standing on the corner of a building, and the bottom of that building would connect in this way to a vanishing point, allowing us to see down this side of a street, and the other side would connect to a vanishing point, allowing us to see this side of the street. That being said, there are two points that our eyes can meet. And the same rules apply, but instead of matching up your ruler to a horizon line, you're matching it up to two different points. I prefer this one compared to the first one that I've showed you today simply because it gives it a much more uh, realistic look. We look at life um, in a much more broad and panned out perspective, and I think this allows us to see things the way we would normally see them in life. This way is much more like a photograph, and I will put a couple of photographs in my slideshow here to show you what I mean. Um, a lot of times people use a tripod with a photograph, and they're going to line things up perfectly so the horizon is very visible and evident. Um, sometimes in artwork, um, that horizon line is not as evident, and in interior scenes, like the warehouse scene I described earlier, that's not as evident, so you often need to just draw what the eye would see. Lastly, I think it's a great idea to go in with a pen and maybe colored pencils and just add some shade to your drawing. Everybody knows that when you take the time to shade things, just to basically outline forms and areas that are poles, It doesn't take much. I mean, literally, you know, 30, 40 seconds of shading sometimes makes a big difference to your audience. If they're anything like my parents or old people that look at my work, they don't often want to come take the time if we haven't made the time to give it some obvious work ethic and show them that you understand the meaning of the lesson um, arising here. Okay, so I'm being very quick, but please go grab a pencil of your own and do this now.